Training, how are you today? Hey everybody, what's going on? Good to be with you. What is up? Periscope, Facebook Live, what's going on today? Hey, welcome back everybody to the Worst Routine Training Morning Show. How are you today? I'm Brandon Dempsey, your host, and great to have you. How is your Thursday? Man, we're riding close to Christmas, and uh, hopefully that your Christmas shopping is done. Maybe uh, that's not so much in comparing, comparison to your Christmas preparation of services. Don't know. Uh, it's a race, right? <laughs> so what's up with you guys? Good folks coming in right here. Thanks so much, all you guys coming in on Periscope. Facebook Live, what is up? We have Ben Potts with us. What's going on, Ben? Also, praise him always. And the Praiser. We have some good other people coming in on by computer as well. Hope you guys are doing great. Go ahead and take the time right now and share out this broadcast with your friends as you're watching by Periscope, Facebook Live. What's up, Facebook Live people? Hope you guys are doing great as well. And uh, also, those of you that are listening by our audio broadcast. What's up, Cherise on Periscope? Good to see you. If you're listening by audio broadcast, iTunes, Spreaker, thanks so much for that. We really appreciate it. And if you would, uh, by all means, all broadcasts, uh, as we're doing three live at the same time, it's pretty crazy. But if you would, please go ahead and share out this broadcast with your friends. Let everybody know what is up and invite them to the show this morning because we're talking about confident vocals. So what area in your vocals are not so confident? I've been asking this question throughout our morning on both our exclusive page for worship leaders exclusive exclusive group for worship leaders that is and you can find that by going to facebook and typing in worship team training exclusive group for worship leaders so it's just for worship leaders only it's unlike our regular worship team training page so we've had like about probably over Maybe close to 15 that joined us this week. So thanks so much for you guys coming in. It's great to see you. We had 12 in one day on Tuesday, so that was fantastic. So again, just go to Facebook.com and look for the group Worship Team Training Exclusive Group. Just do that. So thanks so much. And um, I put up a poll this morning and uh, asking, well, actually, I've been putting a poll this past week and another one this morning about asking you guys, of uh, what do you think is the most, let, let's say, when it comes to singers and worship leaders, why are they not confident? That was my question. And so we had some people that have answered, and I'm going to read those in just a second. I wanted to uh, thank you guys for coming out. Th if this is your first time to either watching or listening to broadcast, we say thank you so much. And if you would, please hit the follow button wherever that you're at or like us. That would be a great thing for us, and also you can give us some hearts. You're watching my Periscope, likes by Facebook, and also like us on our audio. Uh, we broadcast 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays at Central Time. And this, this is for worship leaders, singers, pastors, musicians. Again, my name is Brandon Dempsey. I'm a follower of Jesus, and I happen to lead a ministry called worshipteentraining.com. And what we do, we come to your church, work with your worship team, hands-on instruction, like with guitar or vocals, whatever. And also, we have a mentoring program. You can find everything you want to know at worshipteentraining.com. Also, be sure to sign up for the weekly news, the weekly newsletter. You can get a book while you're at it. That comes with the weekly newsletter. It's uh, when you first sign up. Just go to worshipteentraining.com slash enews or worshipteentraining.com and look for the yellow button and the email field in the upper right-hand corner. Be sure to sign up and get your weekly news. Uh, we had this past week in our weekly news, we launched off the brand new book that I had written called The Gift and the Giver. So I am putting that up right now. Miss Royal, what's up? Sharice, what's up? Fantastic people coming in right now on Periscope. Thanks so much. You can get the new book Thanks, Ben. Good to see you, bro, on Facebook Live. Uh, the new book is called The Gift and the Giver, and you can find that actually. What's up, Cherise? You can find the new book at worshipteentraining.com slash the gift and the giver. It's, it's not a uh, fancy uh, landing page name. The Gift and the Giver. You can find our books right now on Logos Bibles Faith Life. That's who we are selling through. So it's a pleasure to be with them. We're also going to be connected with the brand new Faith Life Groups. And that is going to be exciting. So if you also will open up another device or uh, you can do that later on, be sure to check out our new group 
on Logos Bibles and Faith Life groups. Uh, you can, I just put up the link just now on Facebook, and also I'm hitting you guys up right now on Twitter, and you can search for that. Uh, basically, it's a brand new group that we have started on Faith Life, and I want to be talking about them from time to time coming up because they got some fantastic things coming. Uh, they put out the software called Proclaim uh, Lyric, or uh, I'm sorry, Proclaim Presentation Software, and it does display lyrics as well as sermons and everything else. We use it in our church. Uh, there's a, the thousands and thousands of people use the program. I find it very user friendly. I'm going to do a review on that coming up on another show, but it's a, a great, great product. They also, of course, put out their other Bible apps that you can find everything at faithlife.com. So I just shot out the link to you on Twitter and also Facebook, so be sure to check that out and join the group because we're having about in the tens and tens of thousands of people are going to be joining it as well. So it's going to be putting us up to a new level and we're very, very excited about that. Thank you guys for being a part of it because you guys are like the charter members of everything. So awesome. So thanks so much. Periscope, Facebook Live, TV Songs, Terry Davis, what's up? Good to see you, brother. Uh, who else is on the cast right now? Please go ahead and share this out. So the question today, the question of the day is, why do you think your singers are worship leaders? Why are they not confident in their voices? Let us know. We've been asking that question. I'm going to read some responses in just a second. Let me hear from you. Go ahead, please type in your comment into the window. You can do that right now. Periscope, Facebook Live, iTunes. I, that was kind of a weird, almost British accent came out, and I'm not British. Um, and I'm not even going to try either because we have friends across the pond that watch these broadcasts, and they laugh every time when I try to do something amazing like that, and I won't. So, uh, look, you got this question when you look into your worship leaders and singers' eyes, they have the deer in the headlights, question mark. What do I do? Why do you think they're not confident? Talk to us. Come on, Periscope, Facebook Live, let us know what's up. If you're listening by audio, type in the comment at the nearest comment box that you can find right there. So we got one response coming um, right now from Joe Graham. And Joe is a member of our exclusive group for worship leaders. Thanks so much, Joe, for joining us on Facebook. And he says this, number one, wow, he's got points. Okay, so I'm going to have to open up the little link that says see more. Yikes. He's got three of them. You ready? Okay. And I'm going to share mine about how we can become confident. All right. We're talking about the things right now of what makes singers or worship leaders underconfident. Right. And that could be you. I don't know. Uh, Joe Graham says, number one, they don't like the sound of their own voice. Ooh. Okay, Terry on Periscope just says, not sure of the music or lyrics. What? Are you kidding me? Come on. Every singer knows their lyrics, right? Joe says this, they don't like the sound of their own voice. Man, isn't that the truth? Okay, who agrees here? Periscope, Facebook Live, who agrees? They don't like the sound of their voice. I know it took me years, or nada. <laughs> See, Terry is responding. Thanks so much, Terry. Yeah, you know, I, I found over the years... When I first started leading worship, Monique, what's up, Monique? How are you on Periscope? Good friend here. You also can follow us on Periscope. Just go to that app, Periscope, and look at search worship team training. All right, so yes, getting over the fear of the voice, of hearing your own voice. I remember when I started leading worship, that was the number one thing that I, well, you know what? It was one of the number one things that I couldn't stand. <laughs> I have many other ones, but for me, um, I studied voice. What's up, Monique? I studied voice, and uh, I really, you know, when you study voice and, and the classical genre and all that, uh, you take your music recorder with you to private lessons and everything else. But it never occurred to me about not hearing the sound of my voice until when I started actual studio recording and live uh, music. That's when I became conscious of my voice. And for some, it may happen way earlier on. For me, it didn't happen until just when I was starting to lead worship, and I was using more live equipment, doing a lot more studio time, and then I realized, wow, I mean, I've never had this problem before until I started hearing my own voice. And then when you watch video playbacks or whatever, it's kind of like, oh, man, well, no wonder why your singers may have that look on their voice, right, on, on their faces. Look on their voice, too, right? You can see that also. Six foot one chick on Periscope. Thanks so much for joining us. 
Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I dig that. You know, Joe, I'm with you. Uh, he says, number two, I got more comments to read, and so type in your own right now. The things that you feel make your worship leader, that could be you, or singers, underconfident, okay? And then I'm going to talk about how you can be confident in, in just a moment. Number two, Joe says on Facebook, on our exclusive group for worship leaders, he says, they've been taught that worship is not a place to show off. Well said. You should not draw attention to yourself. You should be humble, right? So they are afraid to belt out or really express themselves. Okay, we don't belt here at Worship Team Training, but I know what he means. All the successful girl worship leaders I've seen have not been afraid to be a bit of diva. I've seen so many girls comparing themselves. Yeah, okay, Miss Royal says comparing themselves to other singers. Yes, that will make you underconfident. Okay, so Joe goes on to say, I've seen others, other girls be a bit of a diva. Um, they have fun with their friends, belting out, sound great. Then come Sunday morning, they sound like a mouse. Okay, <laughs> wow. So we have this discrepancy, right? A change from rehearsal and Sunday worship. Do you see that difference? I do. I see it in my musicians. They're like, yeah, they're like a mouse. Well said. I like that, Joe. Joe, I hope you're watching the live show because I'm doing this for you, man. Joe Graham. All right, number three, fear of judgment. Wow, now that is huge. Yeah, are they judging me? Don't judge. Don't be judging me. Do they not like the diva in me? They don't like the sound of my voice. They don't like what I'm wearing. They think I shouldn't be here. They don't like the song. Okay, many of you right now are probably shaking your heads up and down in agreement like, yeah, uh-huh. I've been there before. Uh, maybe that was me this past Sunday. Maybe that's me right now. Yeah, I mean, every time we lead worship, even myself, I, I'm thinking sometimes of, wow, is this song really coming across to people? Is it really hitting where it needs to be? And that's not where my mind should be going. Okay, so let's talk about that. What are your thoughts? Periscope, Facebook Live, let us know. Hey, by the way, all you guys watching and listening, I am thinking we are moving to a new time. Yes, so the new time of our show will be at 11 a.m. Central Standard. I asked last week what you like better, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., and 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, people say please, so they win. So the majority says 11 a.m. So starting the first of the year, our shows will be coming at you at 11 a.m. Central. All right, we got another comment coming up. Uh, Tabrina Washington Hall says this, why she thinks. People are underconfident. The enemy is aware of the power of worship, so he uses fear, insecurities, and even pride. Oh, come on, not pride, right? Even pride to prevent a lead singer from being confident in who they are in Christ. Wow, couldn't be more true. I mean, all the feelings that even Joe said, his, his three points, yeah, um, I think that God, you, you know, God is aware of what we go through as human and wants us to rely on him and not the enemy, the insecurities. Not that we rely on him, but I mean, sometimes we kind of do rely on self, right? Thinking, well, yeah, I need to get this right, or I can do this. No, you can't do this. That's what I was saying on Snapchat this morning. You can only do this through Christ Jesus, all these things. So yeah, the enemy is after us, you bet. I mean, my pastor and I were talking about this last night. Even when it comes to Christmas services, we had our Advent service last night. And we get so busy in everything that we just lose the joy. So that could be one. You lose the joy in, in leading worship or singing because the enemy is present. Yeah, but you know what? God is bigger than this. All right, so Nathaniel's. Nathaniel, I'm sorry. I said his name by plural. That was not correct. I'm sorry. There's only one of him. You don't want two or three or more of yourself, right? I know I don't. All right, so Nathaniel, forgive me, Nathaniel Paralis says when worship becomes performance, we become more focused on playing the right notes, singing the right words, keeping temp tempo, etc. I've done a lot of sets where the singers don't know the songs. They fix their eyes on the back of the screen, sing quietly so as they make mistakes less obvious. Uh, the only way to defeat this is by first realizing that worship is a means to lead people to the throne. Second, Practice, 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 and please don't show up on the day not knowing the songs. Terry, that goes back to what you said. Couldn't be more true. Thanks so much, Nathaniel. Yeah, I mean, we have to be in worship first before we can ever think that we can lead others in worship second. Is that right? 
And then absolutely, practice, practice, practice. I mean, the more and more that you know your music, the less and less you're going to take a fall. Mistakes will happen, but you'll have a better understanding of how to recover and where to go from there. And so that's what I re uh, rely on. If I don't practice a song before rehearsal, it's my fault. It's nobody else's. I can't say, well, the drummer didn't get his part right and his t timing threw me off. Nah, -uh. No, I don't think so. As much as we may want to blame other people, it starts with you. It starts with me. I just did that, didn't I? I gave you an Isaac double point. I didn't mean to do that. If you're watching by video, sorry. If you're listening, no apologies because you didn't miss anything. Okay, so let's talk about the things of how and why. How can we get more confident? Valette, Valen, Valenette on um, Facebook, thanks so much for coming in. Hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, so let's talk about, you know, what can we do to overcome the underconfident feelings that we go through as singers and worship leaders, right? So that you can find our today's post, by the way, at worshipteentraining.com slash confident vocals. All right, so I'm typing that in here right now. And I've already put up the links earlier on Twitter. Um, and just because you guys are good sports, I will do this again and uh, put the link up there for you. So, yeah, practice, practice your music. I can go all day talking about that. Uh, for me, it has to be that confidence because if I am thinking about leading others into worship, I need to be confident in what I'm singing. Again, if not, it's my own fault. It's nobody else's. So here are some things that I've come up with. These are, I mean, there's a thousand and one things you can think of. And, and I know that other people have better ideas than I do. And if that's the case, share them out. Type them in the comment window because we'll never know if you don't say anything. So uh, there's three things that I thought of. Uh, number one, the ears. Okay, using our ears. There's three things that we can do. Your ears. Hear what the lyrics are saying. Okay, hear what the lyrics are saying. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Live the song. Memorization is one of the top things we can do to free us up as singers from the vocal prison. Okay, uh, memorize, memorize, memorize. And yes, having a projection wall is great, but I tend to use it as a reference. So I'm not looking at it all the time. I want to know where I'm at in the music, absolutely. I want to make sure I'm singing the right words, but I also can't put all my trust on the confidence monitor, the screen, or even if I have music in front of me. Why? Because what if something goes wrong? Uh, my guitar player had a great point last week. He said, Brandon, what's our contingency plan if everything fails? You know, and he just asked me, just kind of spitballing, and I said, yeah, you're, you're right. You know, we have to have songs that are memorized, easy songs that we can do that people know and people love. I mean, one of my all-time favorites let it rise by holland davis what's up holland watching you bro um i mean the song is easy you know let the glory of the lord rise among us you know something simple that people can sing but when you notice like i've had services like that have you where the whole system were to shut off right how's your confidence then if you're relying totally on the technology that's not a good basis of number one uh your application of faith and number two, your works of faith, right? I mean, you have to know the music. So I can say, without a doubt, the best services we've had were times when things have failed because we knew our music and we're able to turn around a song and just say, all right, um, you know, we're going to sing, uh, Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. You know, and then we're singing, we're playing. It's fun and we know the music and the confidence is out there. And plus, you're also not having to rely on what the what if the microphone doesn't work or the monitor's not coming through right or whatever. You can just take all that out, you know? So here's what I do. Thanks, six foot one chick. Uh, what I do is this. I try to imagine, as I'm leading worship, I try to imagine that I don't have any sound support whatsoever. I just try to make sure, like, this is what they teach you in vocal class. You, your voice starts with you. It doesn't start with the microphone. It starts with you. That's the key of, ha of shaping and creating good tone. So by, when I say by the ears, by listening to the music, uh, it's also listening back. It's, it's listening to what the lyrics are saying within the song. Uh, like Let It Rise. I love that song because it's so simple. 
and it from the bottom of my heart, you know, praise should come out, let it rise. I mean, I think about the song, think about the words that you're singing. Are they believable to people? I mean, that's, you know, kind of one on one, but it's it's simple truth, right? Uh, God does not require sacrifice, but only a contrite heart. So, number two, uh, things that you can help overcome and growing your confidence. Number two, your eyes. Making sure that you are watching the congregation. Don't bury your eyes in the music. Don't bury your eyes into the floor or into the monitor. I've seen and heard so many great singers that they shut off. And this what this goes back to uh, uh, the couple of points of what guys were making at the top of the broadcast today were, were the, the, the discrepancy from rehearsal to leading worship, right? It all changes because you, you feel great in rehearsal, nobody's there watching you, but then when it comes in front, when, when you're in front of people, everything changes. You have to get used to standing in front of others, like it or not. If you're gonna be on the vocal team, you're gonna be in the band, you cannot say to the worship leader, yeah, but you know what, I, I'd like to just sit on that that back stool back over there, maybe behind the curtain. I had a guitar player say that to me. This was years and years ago. He said, Brandon, I love playing guitar, but I do my best playing when I'm behind a curtain and nobody can see me. And then I said, you know what? Uh, you make the perfect means for being a studio musician. And that's the truth. But I, was, I encouraged him and I said, you know what? Throughout our relationship and as he served on the team, I started kind of peeling away a little bit of that curtain uh, week after week. And then finally, yeah, then he got to be more confident with his playing. Singer is the same thing. I mean, like, you know, singers are afraid of making a mistake, right? And then their eyes go as big as saucers, right? That's the worst thing you can do. Don't draw it to yourself in that negative way. But look, if you make a mistake, so what? If you know the music well enough, then you should be able to pull it off. It's not a big deal. So, you know, we've been talking about the song a little bit, the new song by Noel. I'm sorry, not by Noel. <laughs> Uh, Lauren Diego, uh, Chris Tomlin's new release, Noel, uh, a fantastic song. I love it. And when you listen to the words, you know, uh, Terry says this on Periscope. He says, sing on, lead on, even if the congregation doesn't get with you. Yeah. I mean, you got to, you know, you never know. You may walk into a service and people are just not usually ready to worship. That's our job is to help them, right? And then when they're in a spirit of worship, keep going. You know, but keep your eyes up and out. That's what I was saying. That's the number two point. Um, you know, when I think about, thanks, six, six for one chick and, and Terry, uh, Periscope. When I think about this new song, Noel, um, you know, it's, I'm doing this in the key of F. The original is the key of D flat for women. So I'm putting it up a little bit in my range uh, because this is perfect for altos uh, in the key of D flat. So I'm raising it just a bit for tenor voices. Now, I love the song. Uh, this is a song that she was speaking to last week. That's so funny, six foot, six foot one chick. Yeah, it's a great, great song. Um, you know, it's got love and caught and love divine. That's our lyric line right there. Starving angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The Savior of humanity. Now those words right there. The Savior of humanity. Low notes, but you have to sing those just as confident as you do the higher ones, right? Um, Unto us a child is born. He shall reign forevermore. Right? Chorus. No no come and see what God has done. No no Right? You have these higher notes like that. And so what's great about that song is that when you even when you listen and, and watch uh, Lauren as she sings this beautiful song. Uh, you can find this track, actually, on guytracks.co, and it's great. But the, the chorus, I mean, it just rings out. You know, I mean, she's believing in what she's singing. She's listening to the lyrical line. I mean, we're singing about, the. I mean, look at the lyric. Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done. I mean, that's such a, such a powerful statement. You know, you should sing that with power, right? Noel. 
no end. Come and see what God has done, right? No end, no end. The story of amazing love, the light of the world, given for us, right? So it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, so yeah, so again, we talk about the two points, using your ears, listening to the lyric, using your eyes, keeping your eyes up and out. So number three, the third point, hands and heart. Now I know I'm playing guitar right now, but if I was leading without guitar and I was just singing, use your hands and, and a gesture of an act of worship. Don't use your hands to showboat or to point to the crowd or point the mic to the crowd. Don't do that. But what I mean is worship is a response and singing is no different. So we respond to God with our voices. We respond to God in lifting our hands. It's biblical. When you read the Psalms and read throughout the story life of David, how he uh, stretched out his hands in a weary and dry land, uh, also stretched his hands out at night. I mean, these are all biblical. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.8 says, In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands. Women too. Lift it up to God. Why don't we do this in leading worship? Are we afraid that people may think you're a fanatic? Uh, you know, don't stand next to somebody and, and point in their way and, you know, poke their eye out. But, you know, I mean, lifting of the hands and, and of worshiping, the lifting of our voices, right? Uh, singing, you know, no L, no L. You know, you're, you're lifting up that song. I mean, it should be the same thing with, with your body, with your hands and um, our spirits. So this song, any song, should come alive. And I mean, when you are listening, paying attention, watching, you know the music, your hands, your heart is free, you've practiced, you've done all these things, then actually leading worship and singing to God is your normal daily service response, right? What, what uh, Paul tells us in Romans 12. And actually, it's kind of a leading worship becomes almost the, uh, the natural response itself because you are naturally responding to God and everything else should take shape the way it is. It's not worked up. There is no magic bullet. There's no science. There's no, oh, I gotta get this right. Um, if those things are the case, then maybe you've you, you got some homework to do. But simply being, worship is a response, and our response to God should be greater than what it is in the black and white. That's my two cents. So I hope that today's broadcast encouraged you. I hope that it's something that you can um, walk away with and feel encouraged and feel confident the next time you lead worship. Take this when you lead worship this coming Sunday. My goodness, it's Christmas. You have other things to be stressed about, right? So don't let this be one of them. <laughs> if you got Christmas services, then look, I'm praying with you. Uh, but I pray for God's blessings upon you and what God is doing through your worship team and your church. And that may God, of course, receive all the praise and all the worship by what you do even this week. So I encourage you, worship leaders, singers, continue to keep your head up, your heart lifted up, your eyes and ears up and out and be in the worship of God. Enjoy this season. Enjoy this season. Don't be robbed by the enemy. So guys, look, uh, FYI, we are going to be off the air next week, the week of Christmas, and probably the week after. We're taking about two weeks off. Uh, so we will come back at you on the 1st of January. So we have a lot of things lined up. I can't wait. We got more webinars coming. We have more Hangout guests coming. That's podcast guests. That is. And we have more topics on worship, on vocals, on instruments. I can't wait. Our guys are working very, very hard. Scott Hussey at GuyTracks.co. Please be sure to see him. Also, be sure to check out the new book, The Gift and the Giver. You can find that at worshipteentraining.com slash The Gift and the Giver. And coming up, I mean, my vocals almost screeched when I said that. And we have our second new book coming out the first of the year. Are you ready for this? The big, big news, big, big news. The title, of the, the title of the new book is called The Journey of the Worshiper. 
I can't wait. The Journey of the Worshipper is coming out on Logos Bibles Faith Life, and you will hear it here first, and we'll put the links out on the site. You'll still find all of our articles throughout this week, next week, and the week after during Christmas as well, but you'll get the new link and in the newsletter, if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll also get the link when the new book comes out as well, so please check that out. All right, so we'll see you guys soon. Be sure to check us back at everything that you can find at worshipteentraining.com. Love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we will see you the first of the year. So until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much. See ya.